So I have a bit of a rule. It's not like a set in stone rule or something I decided on, but it's just been something that's like been kicking around in my uh, animal brain. It's basically a rule that I don't get excited for video games. I haven't since 2014. Now, what happened in 2014 exactly? Uh, every single game I was excited for and had pre-ordered in 2014 disappointed me. Hugely. Now let's go through them. Some of these actually had an opportunity to be good. All right, Destiny, Destiny 1 disappointed me so much. I was so excited for it. When Destiny 1 first came out, it was a bit of a disaster. I'm not sure how many people remember how much of a disaster Destiny was when it first released, obviously got better, but it was like a disaster. And I was a kid who I loved Halo so much. And so for me, I was like, oh, it's basically a new Halo game. And it wasn't, it wasn't at all. So I was so disappointed. I'm just, like, I was 13 at the time when all this stuff was coming out. So money was like difficult. So when a new game came out and I bought it, it, it meant a lot. So Destiny 1 was hugely disappointing. Next one was Dragon Age Inquisition, another game that I watched every trailer for. I pre-ordered, I was so excited for. And yet, I, I'm sure a lot of people really liked it. I didn't. I couldn't understand anything that was going on. It was the first type of game like that I'd ever played. None of the systems made sense to me. I was 13 once again, so it was like, it was a bit beyond me. The story didn't make any sense to me. I couldn't understand anything. I couldn't understand how to progress and how all the systems like factored into each other. I was completely lost and I was really disappointed by it. I also soft locked the game, I'm fairly sure. Yeah. And then the next one <laughs> was The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I loved The Amazing Spider-Man, the game, the first one. I loved it so much. And I played like heaps of Spider-Man games because Spider-Man was like my favorite superhero at the time. And so I was like, oh, there's a new one. And I saw the trailers and I was like, I was so pumped for it. And it came out and it, it, it was probably the worst game I've ever played. Uh, and it was like, it just shocked me how terrible it was. Because all the other games, it was just like, oh yeah, well in Destiny, the gameplay's fun. It's just everything else was bad. Uh, it With uh, Dragon Age, it was like, oh, this is really like mature and grown up and I like that, but I just don't understand anything that's going on. With this, it was like, no, this is, this is boring. This is bad. This is really bad. Um, so yeah, it was just t terrible and I was... I was burnt. I was burnt by those bad experiences. And so from that point on, I would just never get excited about a game release. I just didn't care. And so I would, that's not to say I haven't enjoyed games since. I've loved so many games since, but I haven't, I've never pre-ordered a game since. I've never like been super excited. The only one was a bloody SpongeBob game that came out like a year ago. And that was just because I was making videos on it and it was like a point of content for me. So I was excited for that. But like... I was excited for it for the purpose of making videos on it. I didn't care if it was good or not. I knew I would make a review on it type of thing and all that type of stuff. So it was for content. That's what I was excited about. Final Fantasy 15, a game I absolutely love. I bought it like three months after it came out. I didn't pre-order it. I didn't watch any trailers for it. I picked it up out of the blue and I loved it. Persona 5, same thing. Picked it up out of the blue, loved it. Alan Wake, same thing. It's like all these games, uh, well, I bought Alan Wake a long time after release, just saying, but um, I just stopped getting hyped for games. Games would just come out and I'd like read some reviews about it and be like, oh yeah, I'll give that a go. And I, it was a point of like pride for me in a lot of ways because I hear people talking about, oh, I'm so excited for this game or I'm so excited for that. And then they would get disappointed when it came out and be like, well, expectations are the thing for drawing. <laughs> um, and all that type of stuff. And so I like that's been the way for like eight years now. I just wouldn't get excited for games. Uh, yeah, ha Harry, the Hogwarts Legacy has ruined that streak for me. I am so goddamn excited for this game. Now, yes, I 100% understand, as uh, Sensei Marques Browley would say, uh, expectations of the Thief of Joy and all that type of stuff. And so... I completely agree with that, and I believe like the people who are getting super, super, super hyped for it are setting themselves up for disappointment, and that's my thing. It's just like, just expect, like, expect as little as you can, and you'll always be happy. But I am 
so excited for this game. It is the first game in eight years that I've pre-ordered. I've pre-ordered like a deluxe edition of it. I am so excited. I've been on this channel. I've been working through playing and reviewing all the Harry Potter games leading up to it because I'm so excited. I've covered news about it. I've been, as you can see on my little uh, bench over there, I've been rereading through all the Harry Potter books to get ready for it. I am so excited. And let me talk about why. So one of the first things that has made me really excited about it was how slow learning about this game has been. It hasn't been, ah, oh, we got a trailer, like our first time finding out about it was a trailer. And it's like, oh, and it's coming out in a year type of thing. It's not, it hasn't been like that. We've been hearing like details and leaks and all that type of stuff for years. For years, this game has been in development. Like it has been just hanging around on the fringes for like, Three, four years? I'm not sure. I remember there was a big leak and this, and like WB was just like, no, we're not going to talk about that. And they, like, they scrubbed it from the internet and all that type of stuff. And that was years and years and years before they even showed a trailer. This game has been like in development and around for so long. And what's funny is the stuff that we saw like that was originally leaked is stuff that we've now seen. So it's not like uh, this game's gone through like heaps and heaps of iterations and all that type of stuff. They've been developing the stuff that we've been seeing for so long. And that's something that's really rare to see that isn't like a game like, uh, like developed by like uh, a PlayStation exclusive or an Xbox exclusive. Like it's, it's something in, from you know, my experience that's really rare. And then the way that they've been putting out trailers and it, and exploring more information is really interesting to me, and I've been really enjoying it. And this kind of slow drip, and this whole thing of just like, I know, just a different way of releasing and handling a game. It's just a treating it more of it will come out when it's done, and I, it will come out when don't it will come out when it's done, and. All that type of stuff, and that's something we don't see. Like we live in a world of cyberpunks and all that type of stuff, where people will release the game and it's almost unplayable, and then they'll like repair it and fix it later and all that type of stuff. And it's like it's really refreshing to see something where they just didn't give us a release date for so long, and then they did, and then they delayed it. And also, I, I. Everyone, every time I've brought this up to people, people have been like, oh, well, uh, Cyberpunk was delayed, so that's not actually not a good sign. And every time I've come back with the same thing, I'm like, yeah, well, imagine what Cyberpunk would have looked like if they hadn't delayed it, if they had released it when it originally was like meant to come out. It would have been horrific. So the fact that they're delaying it, I am really excited about that and really happy about that because it's a sign of giving it that extra bit of time. And I'm always happy to see that personally. So those types of things make me more excited for it. And the way that they're handling the trailers is fine, all that type of stuff. And like the the advertising and all that, like yeah, it's typical game stuff. But here's the thing that really excites me. And I'll, I'll preference, I'm a Persona nerd. I adore Persona. I've played nearly all of them now. I absolutely love Persona. And what I can see with this game is the potential for gameplay mechanics and a gameplay ecosystem that's really exciting and isn't too advanced because we've seen the Persona games, which aren't, at least before 5, weren't AAA games. They were AA, if anything. Like they, It's not impossible and not difficult to do these gameplay mechanics. It's just about the way that you, you handle them. 
and like Persona's been doing them for like decades now. So it's not something that's a, a sh uh, I'm expecting too much for them to do this. I think uh, there's a big chance because we already believe that there's a day-night cycle and that type of stuff. The potential that this game has for really interesting and deep gameplay, gameplay mechanics that create an ecosystem uh, within classes, day and life cycle, all that type of stuff into gameplay, the potential for mechanical ecosystems there is really high and really exciting and something that is just something we don't see out of most games. And as as an industry, people are pushing more for these types of open world games and these larger AAA experiences to be more than what we got on like the Xbox 360, which is basically all that we really got on like the PlayStation 4. Like AAA games and open world games, all that type of stuff, didn't really evolve a heap outside of graphical improvements between those generations. Now, with stuff like Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring and all that of stuff, there is a desire for a, a change in the AAA scene. And that's why I believe Hogwarts Legacy can really fit into, and that is a growth in gameplay mechanics and how mechanics feed into each other. Like, the thing I'm really interested to see is how classes will input into gameplay. And it goes back to that concept of Persona, how in Persona, there is nothing you can do that wastes time. Everything feeds back into the direct combat loop. Everything is an improvement on combat. So everything is valid. And that is incredible. And it's what makes it so satisfying to play Persona 5 and all the Persona games. Everything feeds back into gameplay. And that's the thing that I think will really set Hogwarts Legacy. If they do it, that's what really will set Hogwarts Legacy apart. And whether the game is glitchy as hell or like the facial animation is, is glitchy as hell when it first comes out, that's stuff that can be patched. And that's stuff that I'm not too concerned about. And that's why I don't feel like I'm overblowing it for myself. I'm not expecting it to look as good as it is in the trailers. I'm not expecting the facial animations to be great. I'm expecting bugs because if you don't, then you're setting yourself up for, for disappointment. But I believe in a, a level of gameplay ecosystem. I, I'm really excited for that and to see how that can play out and if they, if they push it as far as I hope they will. Uh, I believe they will have pushed it because if you're going to have classes, you need to have a mechanical reason for those classes. Look at um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Like There is a, a direct reason for the classes. So there is obviously going to be one. There's going to be systems and leveling up and all that type of stuff around classes and all that. Otherwise, there's like... If you weren't going to make Hogwarts a gameplay system, then you just wouldn't be making the game. So the fact that they're doing this shows that they are like pushing it into that route. And that makes me excited. And so all their advertising, all their trailers hasn't really done much for me. It hasn't sold me on that. But the potential of its gameplay systems is really exciting. Now, there is obviously the point where it could be, oh, there is none of that. It's literally just like the last two Deathly Hallows games. It's basically just a shooter, but with wands. Even that, the gameplay that we've seen of combat is really interesting looking. And I think could stand up on its own, even if they don't do those other more interesting mechanics, which I believe they will. But if it was just the gameplay that we have seen, it still has a really good opportunity. And so that's it's something really interesting for me that like I can expand the game and expand my expectations of the game and fill it up with like these con like these more complex gameplay mechanic uh, opportunities. But even what we've seen is enough. Now the game the the combat could be super flashy. There's nothing wrong with flashy combat. Flashy combat can still be satisfying if it's weighty and has a level of of complexity and if there are difficulty settings then you can just pump it up if like it's just a bit too boring for you then you just make it more uh difficult but the stuff that we've seen already is really interesting and i'm really excited to see how they they push that and that's just something i haven't had in eight years a game that on i want to get on day one and whether it's exactly as i've seen in the trailers or more i'm good now 
there is the possibility that the game is a complete disaster and is glitchy and buggy and there for some reason are no gameplay mechanics to Hogwarts and the combat is just flashy and is just spamming the one button um, and like all that type of stuff. Then what do you have next? Exploration. Exploration looks fantastic in this game. The way they've designed locations, their own interpretations of locations, the vast areas they're exploring. Like, with every possible issue that there could be, there is a, then a fallback of something that is most likely going to be great. And that's real, that, that's rare, that's very rare, but that's exciting. And I really like that, that there is, there is fallbacks. If that's glitchy, there's this fallback. If that's boring, there's this fallback. And there's like, there is so many of those where it's just like, it's real, it's going to be really hard for them to fail at this and, and to, like miss the mark now it's not going to be hard for people to overblow their expectations of it because there are so much there's so much that they're doing and there's so much potential and if people aren't okay with fallbacks they want the whole package then you are setting yourself up for a level of uh disappointment expectations and all that type of stuff but there are enough fallback opportunities that i have quite a lot of faith in this and avalanche aren't random newbies like they are experienced and all that type of stuff and I'm very <laughs> sort one issue that could be presented is the fact that the game has like a whole multiple choice type of stuff and it could be the whole thing of just like well there's actually only two choices that's good or evil type of stuff but even with that I'm kind of okay with that because like I just play the game twice and then experience the good side I experience the bad side I don't see what's the problem of having basically two plot points like two storylines instead of uh, six different options six different options um but all of them kind of lead you and there's only just, like, just different endings type of stuff i prefer two separate and kind of distinct plot lines that you can base on either of your stuff you choose than like a bunch that kind of only lead in like slightly different directions i'd prefer two distinct than heaps of different ones um now people might disagree with that uh but uh, i don't care but yeah so that's hogwarts legacy uh it's something i'm really excited for and i'm really keen to see how they handle a bunch of the different opportunities we have i think it's playing a trailer back there so yeah it's something i'm really excited for i think it has a lot of opportunities and a lot of really cool systems that they could uh, push and a lot of cool concepts that they could push and there's very unless it unless they really try to ruin it I think it has a really good chance of being as good if not better than a lot of what we've seen so far and I'm really excited for that and I'm really excited that they took this extra time I would have loved to have played it in December but I'm happy to play it in February as well uh, let me know your thoughts on the game have you been following along with it uh, yeah bye <laughs>